see. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for the invitation to Giuseppe and Susanna and all the team for organizing this training school. I'm a train team, I'm working, I'm postdoc at the Cyprus Institute in Cyprus, and I'm the coordinator of the Cypriot case study that we are going to present today with my colleague, Lola Vico Lopez, that was in charge of the short-term scientific mission uh, in Cyprus. So our presentation today will give you an overview about uh, Ayanapa, the village and its landscape, the tourist system, uh, the pandemic crisis and the challenge to recover the um, underground built heritage. So here you can see the location uh, of Ayanapa that is in the southeast coast of Cyprus. And the landscape is characterized by high cliff warning toward the sea with suggestive sandy beaches, as you can see. And all the region lies on a limestone bedrock, which was exploded since antiquity to extract building materials, as you can see on the quarry on the uh, right uh, bottom picture as well as to create functional space. Uh, on the left, you can see uh, the complex of Macronissos that are Hellenistic tombs. So another really, uh, the main um, happening that characterizes uh, the history and the present uh, landscape of the area is um, the Turkish invasion of the island in 1974. Uh, Famagusta then, back then, was the main touristic city of the Eastern Mediterranean. The city was occupied, and so a lot of refugees moved south in Ayanapa. You can see that the distance is 20 minutes by car. And, um, of course, uh, all these refugees started with the help of the government. Uh, the touristic activities they were having uh, holding in Famagosta and um, after 1974, so basically from the 80s, the landscape of the small little fishing village of uh, Ayanapa changed drastically. Here you can see a 1960 picture and the same, peak, the same area in uh, uh, the 90s. Today, within this general landscape, uh, the monastery is uh, uh, located in the center of the new village. I'm saying new village because the, the European expansion during the last year has crucially grown. And uh, here you can see some picture. Uh, in Top left, you can see in yellow the area of the monastery, and the red are the streets with the, uh, where the tourist system of Ayanapa, that is basically um, benefiting from the beaches, but also a high offer of night clubbing, is located. So in red you have, uh, and you can see the picture of what is going on, of course, before, before COVID, the top uh, right, while uh, the, the picture below was taken uh, in June during the um, last scientific um, STMs. So the monastery is really very close to this area that, as you can see, has uh, a, a very high level of light and sound pollution. Uh, all the urban landscape has crucially changed and is at the service of a very cheap and uh, noisy tourism. So this is our site, the monastery. This is the exterior part of the cave church that is the focus of our project. And uh, it's part of a monastic uh, complex. 
So now, very briefly, I will go through the main phases just to present uh, how it developed. So the structure, as you can see, has the church, uh, the top of the picture, then on the right, uh, there's a residential public building, and the monastic complex uh, on the lower part of the picture, embracing and closing the, the area. The cave church, that is the focus of uh, our focus, is, as you can see, has a part that is carved, not carved, is basically a natural uh, cave, a grotto, with the uh, holy water spring. All the area is very rich in uh, springs. And uh, at this in this space, uh, a I cannot, I don't know if you can see. So in this area, uh, this area has been enclosed to create the bima, the space for the liturgy in the Orthodox tradition, and then other spaces have been added. Here, so we are in the underground space. There's also the holy icon of the Virgin that is one of uh, the things that are venerated in the in the site. These spaces were added later and um, to allow basically the double cult, so the Orthodox cult and the Latin cult. Very briefly, so during the Byzantine period, uh, we have this part that you can well see here is a grotto with the, the uh, spring of holy water in this part, then the complex, and we are here in the plan, then the complex developed during the Lusignan period with the addition of this room for the Latin uh, cult, probably it was a private chapel. And during the Venetian period, uh, it was added, it moved a little bit, okay, all this part was added to allowed uh, uh, pilgrims to, to visit the site. Uh, the Venetian in Cyprus and in general in the Near East uh, promoted a lot of uh, pilgrimage tourism or, or visits. And so we can see uh, also in this site that their intervention goes in this direction. So the creation of a big hall as it is uh, uh, usual in this kind of uh, in shrines uh, to allow the, um, the pilgrims to, to, enter, to enter and visit the site. During, ah, and, okay, during the Venetian period, uh, uh, this part was also added or uh, uh, enlarged and a monastery was created. So let's see that, let's say that during the, this period, the monastery really took a, a relevant role, not only from the religious, but also from the economic point of view, because it started having a lot of uh, donation, and uh, he, uh, he was very connected with all the rural activities of the area. During the Ottoman period, uh, we don't have addition to the, the complex, uh, but we see the result, let's say, of the promotion uh, that happened during the Venetian period. So we really have a lot of inscription of people passing by and uh, willing to leave the sign of their passage. And so we really see this interaction that goes beyond the use of a local community but insert the monastery in an international network that was basically the one of pilgrims starting from Venice and heading to the Holy Land because Cyprus in this path was one of the last destination. Uh, during this period, the monastery was still working, but towards uh, uh, the um, 19th century, uh, it, uh, it stopped and the complex started to, uh, to be unused. 
the following period goes back. It's so uh, the church that continued to stay uh, as a relevant place of worship for locals, the monastery start hits decline, and with it all the the monastic buildings and the cells. But uh, the village of Ayanapa start growing uh, around the monastery, and it start growing and start to be seen as uh, a, a genuine place, as uh, a, a real place of Cyprus where uh, the man and the nature has this privileged relationship, as we, for example, can see from uh, this uh, part of the poem of a very famous uh, Greek poet, uh, Georgos Seferis, that visited the island uh, uh, in the 1960s. He was impressed uh, from, uh, um, from the landscape uh, and uh, from this special relationship that the man and had with the, the landscape. All this, as we said, ended very uh, quickly in uh, 1974 after the invasion, because the area was at the center of this huge and uh, uncontrolled touristic development. And due to that, uh, on one side, the tourist model that was uh, um, threatening not only the landscape, but also the, um, the life of the village, and uh, uh, the monastery, because the monastery ended up to be in the middle of night clubbing. Uh, so it was not its place. It was not possible anymore to preserve or to promote his identity. And uh, that's why in um, 2010, on the initiative of the Bishop of Constantien Famagosta with the support of the Frey University of Berlin, University Università Ca' Foscari di Venezia, the local department of antiquity and the Cyprus Institute, a um, project for the musealization of the complex started. Here you see, again, the complex and the plan. So uh, we are working now and hopefully the museum uh, uh, will uh, open next year. There will be in the place uh, uh, where the cells were an exposition area and uh, uh, archaeological excavation will be done. Some of them have already been done. Some other uh, are scheduled for the next year in order to uh, try to recover on one side the story, preserve the site on the other and disseminate uh, to locals and uh, tourists and foreigners the, the heritage and uh, the history and tradition of the monastery. So this is basically the situation that we, uh, with which we started. And I will give the floor to Lola that will explain you and tell you about what we did it's okay. then. I have this one. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can you? Okay. So I will talk about the short term scientific uh, mission. The goal is to assist this construction in the area of community valorization through the mapping of underground build heritage of Ayanapa Cape Church by assessing the technical and social viability of the action, identifying challenges and opportunities, and providing research-based options for the development of open lines of research. I will go quickly because I don't have all this time. This is a method uh, we use for the, this case study. This is a method that can be used also for other uh, similar cases. So we have these uh, five uh, step uh, separate phases that can be repeated and analyzed anytime, which is the principle of the scientific method. Uh, each step has uh, reliability, accuracy, validity, and transparency regarding of the holes. So we have the first one is uh, zooming in on Ayanapa. Sorry. 
Um, the second one is to identify priorities and the strategies and all the uh, data collection. Uh, we have the third phase, which is the stakeholder mapping with supporting questions, uh, meetings, and uh, different data and different sources. When possible, which is not our case, we can also develop metrics for stakeholders' strategies, building models, generating patterns, and so on. We have this uh, SWOT analysis, identifying strengths, weakness, threats, and, and opportunities. And uh, we have the last uh, phase, which is drawing conclusions, deploying results for strengthening underground built heritage, sustainable tourism. And uh, the result in this case are the recommendations to support the coordinated actions toward the reuse, conservation of underground built heritage, and urban regeneration in Ayanapa. Um, this is the stakeholders mapping. We have uh, um, on the right the private sector, so the Cypress Tourist Board, the hotel associations, the Sustainable Tourism Initiative, the UK Trial Foundation. So we have the institutional part. We have two, okay. Five. Five, okay, sorry. And um, we have in the middle the monastery with the, uh, the Cape Church also. And uh, on the left, the, mu the museum team, which is an international team. And we have the University of, uh, Free University of Berlin, Kafoskari, the Cyprus Institute, and uh, also independent researchers and uh, private foundations. So um, I will go on. This is the SWOT analysis. Um, I start weakness, I mean, the, the, the main problem, the main concern is that the charge is not part of the museum, the, the, the project. And uh, the museum project also is unfamiliar to the residents, so this is something that we should improve. And uh, there are also issues on monitoring, ventilation and lighting, I mean technical issues, and uh, climate resilience, accessibility to the place, and ordinary maintenance. Um, on threats, we have the effect of climate change, of course, and uh, the balance between economic growth and preservation, and the protection of the cultural and, and natural sites. And uh, we have also big opportunities in terms of uh, cross-cutting policies, integrating underground build heritage and sustainability dimensions in beach tourism models, the stakeholders' engagement, the possibility of combining religious, socio-economic and preservation aspect, guided tours, so on. I will go. This is something we can discuss later this week. And uh, these are the recommendations. So we have still, yeah. So we can support this new model of underground built heritage management, including urban cultural regeneration, for example, bringing back certain religious worship to the cave charge, promoting the cave charge jointly together with the, with the museum. We can assist to the local stakeholders on technical issues, on so monitoring, on the lighting, accessibility, also green areas and the, all the, the monastery areas. As we can see, this is the, in yellow, this is the, the monastery area, the mayor told us that they are thinking on a new project, urban project for this whole area, so probably we can also support them in terms of a concrete uh, project. We suggest also to design this itinerary in Ayanapa region where the Cape Church and the Ayasma can work as a catalyst for community valorization linking the potential reuses of the spaces by conducting archaeological and historical research. And uh, next steps, we would like to implement the Living Lab method as uh, for the COVID pandemic. It was not possible to gather all these stakeholders, but we have the, the, the contact, we have a good picture of the situation, so this is something we can do in the ne as, uh, next phase. 
and uh, we would like to continue to foster cultural change, encouraging local actors to recognize the value of collaboration and adopt an innovative methodologies for underground big heritage and cultural heritage to guide also stakeholders and local communities in improving resilience against the impact of this pandemic and facilitate the post-pandemic recovery, but uh, also um, in uh, climate change uh, issues. And uh, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Now again, it's time for questions. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Okay. Please introduce yourself. Yes. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. okay. Hello, everyone. Well, thank you for your very informative uh, presentation. I had a question regarding the stakeholder mapping, actually. Can we go back to the slide? Uh, like we are saying that we want to introduce this for the local community and integrate the local community. But when we talk about local community or local present representatives, they are not, at, at least I didn't come to see them part of the, the map actually. We see the universities, we see the department of uh, transportation and all, but not really the people. I, I don't see why we don't come to see people in this, because they are the real stakeholders, actually. The local community is the real stakeholders of the monastery. So, like, is it that actually they are not at all interested, or it's in the study that we don't consider them? Like, it's not, is it that they are not really uh, working with the department of antiquities like it happens everywhere in our countries but like like yeah the question is is it that they are not actually uh, working with them or they are not really going to the monastery at all or how how is the local community approaching to the to the monastery itself Thank you. okay so the local community is not present because, uh, of course, it is a relevant stakeholder, but it's the most difficult one. In Ayan Napa, um, as per the um, uh, statistic of 2018, the uh, summer season hosted uh, 700,000 persons. The residents of Ayanapa are 3,200. They are dispersed. They are not connected in any way. They just run their activities and basically they are fine. They don't see, uh, maybe now after the pandemic, they start creating and trying to connect to, to solve or to react to the pandemic, but the economic situation uh, was not good, let's say, to create a first group uh, to, to connect them. On the other side, the cultural, uh, since anything in the area uh, is um, valorized, unfortunately, from this point of view, and there's a natural park just close by, uh, many archaeological sites that are not so well studied and known. Uh, this is the problem. So, yeah, of course we are uh, considering uh, the, the local community, but for example, within all the stakeholders, the Ayanap and Protaras Hotel Association uh, and um, the, um, also the representative of uh, the Ministry of Tourism, they are all people working in Ayanapa, for example. Uh, it was difficult for us to find someone, the, the mayor was the only one the from moment. Ayanapa. And it's difficult to find people living there from there. So even if when we were asking about their memories about the monastery, it was, uh, we were not living here, we don't know. It's really the, the most challenging part probably, but of course we are considering to, 
try to, this can be an, an opportunity actually also to create something uh, for the city that goes beyond the, the project. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Slava. Uh, I'm from the UK, I'm based in the UK. And um, I have a very similar question. Um, you've listed a number of uh, organizations that represent tourism, obviously, on the right over there. Um, but I don't see tourists. I cannot hear. Can you speak a little bit loud? Sorry. Right. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I will repeat once again. You've listed a number of organizations representing tourism on the right, but I cannot see tourists, and my understanding is that you would like this heritage to be used by tourists, right? So why, why did you not list tourists as a stakeholder over there? And then another question, the reason why I said I'm based in the UK, you listed the UK Travel Foundation over there. So it's a company which deals with sustainable tourism development in the UK. But my understanding is that most British tourists who come to Ayanapa, they are actually typical beach tourists. So I'm quite surprised that you didn't list, let's say, the UK tour operator over there or the UK association of tour operators. Thank you. <laughs> to see who is going to answer. Uh, well, so uh, we didn't list the tourists because uh, they have a very relevant, uh, of course, role for the economy of the area, but they just come, go to the beach, uh, and have reserved hotels uh, because they are basically uh, UK and Russian um, tourists. And uh, it's something, it is a, a very close uh, system. That's also why uh, the, we mentioned the sustainable, I think it's, I yeah. cannot see it. Uh, yeah, the Cyprus Sustainable Tourism Initiative that is uh, funded by a UK organization. And this happened because uh, from the UK, they needed to have certification about the sustainability of the tourism. So they started, in order to keep the, the Cypriot market, they started investing in this. Um, so we don't see them as real stakeholders because at this stage, they really are not interested. They just come and they really don't care. And this is why, uh, this is another challenge for uh, our project. So not only to build the, okay, the museum uh, around the church, to valorize that area, but to start uh, not educating, but sensibilizing uh, the, the public, the tourists going there because they are only visiting the beaches and the restaurant and nightclubs because this is the kind of tourists they want, but we are sure that if they had other options, they could start also uh, going around and uh, seeing a different aspect of the area. It's just that it was the easiest solution and he, the tourism developed in this sense uh, and now the pandemic was a really great help in trying in let understand that, okay, this system can go on because everyone will still come for the beautiful beaches, for the restaurant, to having fun, but it's not only that because numbers have changed and they should aim in having a different kind of tourism, differentiate through, throughout all the year and uh, with a variety of offers, not only this one, that will stay the basic one. I don't know if I answered. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have time for a very short question. And then we will pass to the next presentation, okay? Uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, 
my name is uh, Zwinder Maniko. Uh, regarding the SWOT analysis, okay, I see um, um, looking at the opportunities. You mentioned the combining religious, socioeconomic, and uh, preservation aspects. Uh, but in contrast, in weakness, you say that the church is not part of the museum project. So I would like to understand um, this contrast between the opportunities and weakness. Thank you. Yes, actually, this is a weakness because the church is not part of the museum project. So the, the project is working on the monastery, but the church, the church is completely apart. But at the same time, uh, it can be an opportunity for combining and uh, do also something with the church. So try to promote uh, together, trying to um, take the, the old uh, um, cult and uh, to put uh, again in the, in the chart once the, the project, the museum project will, will be finished. So I think it's uh, both, it's a weakness because it's completely apart, but uh, this is something that we, they can improve actually. As they, this is an uh, ongoing, ongoing project. I, Only, only a, small, a short comment about the, the mapping of the stakeholders, because uh, it's, it's very interesting to understand that this is only a mapping, initial mapping of the real interest. When we, we speak about stakeholders, we really speak about interested people in the initial. But if, for example, they develop other options, other ideas, so it's important that maybe they will find many other actors, stakeholders, interested to participate. It's not only a fixed club in the beginning. So what they did is only what was related to the initial idea, and it will be developed for sure in the, in the next. Also because it's a sort of transition process. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we thank you very much for your presentation.